Do you know which congressman was named the taxpayer's best friend ever? And which congressman never voted to raise our taxes? Can you name the congressman who refused to take the plush pension congressmen give themselves? And who introduced one of the first bills in Congress to limit congressional terms? He's Dr. Ron Paul of Texas, and this is his story. He has spent his life in service to others, as a medical doctor, as a member of Congress, as an author of books and articles, and a producer of educational television programs designed to bring his deep-rooted conservative philosophy to the people, as a husband and father and grandfather. This courageous and quiet congressman has made a worldwide name for himself as a defender of liberty in this country a persistent fighter for the reduction of the power of bureaucrats everywhere and one politician who cannot be bought by special interests maxwell newton i think government should be reduced down to about no. that side downsize it no. yeah that's it you know the way i see it i think some good things have been happening up in washington we've had improvement in the congress there are more individuals up there now more determined to cut back than ever but we really need a little bit more help. And I believe if I go back now, I can help in really pushing our government into spending less and getting around to balancing the budget. And I think it's time we do this. He believes that society prospers when the people rely on their own resources first and look to government last. It is a refreshing experience to spend an hour talking with Ron Paul, James J. Kilpatrick. The kind of government we get is not an accident. It reflects the demands and the desires of the people. And as long as the people believe it's in their best interest to have big government and big government programs, you're going to have big government and you're going to have this waste. But what I witness is something changing now. I sense this from my patients. I sense this from the people I meet, that they're starting to realize the government can't afford it anymore. At the same time, uh, it's not working very well and that we have to do something else. Something else indeed. But why would a doctor, an obstetrician who's delivered more than 4,000 babies, get involved in politics in the first place? When your job is to bring new life into the world, all of a sudden it makes you really aware of what kind of a world these children are coming into, you know, what they have to face. Ron Paul has a record of philosophical consistency unmatched in recent congressional history. He seeks to limit government at practically every turn. His refusal to compromise is legendary. The Wall Street Journal. Ron Paul was a high school and college athlete and an Air Force flight surgeon. He brought his wife Carol and their young family to Brazoria County in 1968 just as area population growth was triggering a desperate need for baby doctors. We arrived in Brazoria County uh, with four little children, two collie dogs, and we were ready to start on a wonderful new life in a town that was full of churches and friendly people. And I think Ronnie was nine, uh, Lori was eight, uh, Randy was five, and Robert was two and a half. Uh, but Ron got busy right away and was delivering so many babies and they needed him so badly here. And one thing he really wanted was to come to a town that uh, needed a doctor. And he just loved medicine, loved delivering babies. You know, any other doctor can make you well, but the obstetrician uh, actually gives you a present. And the present of new life is so special. And after we were here a few years, um, we uh, rounded our family off with our youngest daughter, Joy. In 1974, Ron decided to run for Congress, attempting to become the first Republican ever to represent the area in the House of Representatives. They told him he was crazy to try such a thing, that he had no chance. When Ron told me he was going to run for Congress, I couldn't believe it. I told him that it was something that I felt that he had to really think about, uh, and he, he wanted to know, you know why I was so worried about it. And I said, well, Ron, you'll be elected because when people hear what you have to say 
and they know that you mean it, they're going to elect you. And he said, no. He said, you can't run against Santa Claus. And everyone wants someone to bring home the pork barrel. And I just want to give people their freedom. And I said, but Ron, when you tell them that, they're going to believe it. And you are going to be elected. With the help of friends like baseball great Nolan Ryan, Ron Paul was elected to Congress. He served seven years putting his conservative philosophy on the line in vote after vote. He was an early supporter of Ronald Reagan and led the Texas delegation for Reagan at the 1976 Republican Convention. Personable and well-liked, he was a Republican star in the annual congressional baseball game. He never once voted to raise taxes, and at the end, they called him the taxpayer's best friend. And always, when the House was not in session, he returned to Texas, to his constituents, his medical practice, and his family. I think in the 70s and early 80s, when the Liberal Democrats were running Congress, Ron Paul was seen to be out of step. What he really was was ahead of his time. I strongly support Ron Paul. We very badly need to have more representatives in the House who understand in a principled way the importance of property rights and religious freedom. Milton Friedman. In my politics over the years, uh, I have followed certain principles that I believe that I am obligated to remain consistent to. Fortunately, those principles that I have developed uh, are consistent, I believe, very sincerely, with the Constitution. And the Constitution and the founders of this country really believed in limited federal government. They allowed options for the states, but it was to be very, very limited. In this century, I think we have gone a long way to drift away from these principles of limitation of government power. I believe it's a moral issue more than anything else. Ron Paul is one of the outstanding leaders fighting for a stronger national defense. As a former Air Force officer, he knows well the needs of our armed forces, and he always puts them first. We need to keep him fighting for our country. Ronald Reagan. My experience and my outlook, I think I would be in a position to provide some real leadership. That's why I decided to run. We may never again have a chance like this, ever. We've got to do it now. Medical doctor, Air Force officer, husband, father and grandfather, former congressman, conservative conscience of Congress, the taxpayer's best friend. Ron Paul is all of these. Now he's running for Congress again, and he needs our help in the Republican primary March 12th. We taxpayers can send the taxpayer's best friend back to Congress with our vote to fight for a balanced budget and a smaller government. The time is right. The message is clear. The man is Ron Paul. For more information, or to volunteer to help Ron's campaign for Congress, call 1-800-RON-PAUL. Sponsored by the Ron Paul for Congress Committee, Nolan Ryan, Honorary Chairman. It's the story of a lost city, lost opportunity, lost hope. A story of failed policies failed leadership a story of smooth talking politicians games of he said she said rhetoric and division 
One man has stood apart, stood strong and true. Voting against every tax increase, every unbalanced budget, every time. Standing up to the Washington machine, guided by principle. Ron Paul, the one who will stop the spending, save the dollar, create jobs, bring peace. The one who will restore liberty. Ron Paul, the one who can beat Obama and restore America now. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. We now are a nation known to start war. We feel compelled because of our insecurity that we have to go over and attack these countries to maintain our empire. We have over 700 bases, we're in 130 countries, and they're talking about bombing Iran. It is such a dramatic change from what is truly American and truly constitutional. I don't want to run the world. The Constitution doesn't give me the authority to run the world. We ought to mind our own business is what we need to do. With all this spending overseas, wasted money, this is a continuation of a revolution. It is a peaceful revolution. It's up to you to spread this message around this country. This is an American cause. It's a cause of freedom. There's something going on in this country, and it's big. Spread the 